everyone, today we are talking about lesson 10-1, which is dealing with trigonometry ratios. Uh, hopefully you remember trigonometry a little bit from last year. Uh, trigonometry is basically when we start to talk about triangles, and we're trying to find missing sides and missing angles. And there's lots of different things that go into that, different ways to tackle that, but in general we're going to say that trigonometry is simply the study, um, or a study of triangles. Okay, I will also say here that we are going to mostly stick to talking about right triangles. Okay, there is a little bit of trigonometry that deals with triangles that are not right, but for the, for the most part, we are going to need right triangles in order to do this. Okay, because we're talking about right triangles, we get this word hypotenuse again, uh, which again, hopefully you remember back from geometry, um, talking about that hypotenuse. That is the longest side. of a right triangle. Okay, it's also worth saying that this is across from the right angle. Angle. Okay, um, I will just mention too that the hypotenuse is the longest side. The other sides are what we call legs. Okay, so those legs are the two sides that form the 90 degree angle. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and get started here talking about our trigonometric ratios. So with our ratios, there's three of them. Um, you can see the first two here, the third one's down on the bottom, it's called tangent. So we have tangent, we have cosine, and we have sine. When we say sine, cosine, and tangent, we are talking about the ratio of the sides of a triangle. When we say ratio, we're talking about fractions. Um, sometimes we write them as decimals, but for the most part, we stick to fractions. So when I say sine, I'm specifically talking about the ratio of the opposite side. I'm gonna put that all in capitals because that's really important. The opposite side to the hypotenuse. Okay, so we're really talking about opposite and hypotenuse. We'll talk a little bit more about opposite here in a minute. It is kind of a little tricky there. So when we talk about sine, there is an abbreviation for sine. All three of these have abbreviations. They're three letters each. Um, typically, it's, well, actually all of them, it's the first three letters. So sine is just simply S-I-N. We still say sine. We don't call it sin. We still call it sine. Um, with this, though, you will always have another piece that's attached with that sign. Right now, I'm going to put this symbol in here. This is what we call theta. Put that in here. Theta. Okay, theta is a Greek letter. It's just like pi or alpha, beta. Um, just another Greek letter that we use to represent the angle. Okay, so this is always going to be our missing angle. So if I don't use theta, I can put a number in there for the angle. Um, or a couple different things, depending on what I might have. Uh, the ratio itself, okay, this is the fraction that we're talking about. This is where I'm going to use the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So for sine, it is opposite over hypotenuse, okay, which we sometimes abbreviate as OPP over HYP or simply O over H. Okay. Um, I'm fine if you use over O over H as long as you remember what those are. So in your notes here, I would like you to kind of write them out. But as we move forward, we'll pretty much stick to O and H. <coughs> Excuse me again. Um, taking a look at the picture here, let's talk about sine of A and sine of B. Now, I'm talking about sine in both of these. But because I'm talking about two different angles, I'm talking about different sides. So let's start with angle A. I'm going to start with talking about this angle down here in the corner. Angle A has an opposite side. The opposite side is the side that does not form this angle. So B and D and D both make this angle A. A, A is the separate angle, angle all across, across the triangle. It's my opposite side. So I'm gonna put that on top. And then I need my hypotenuse. hypotenuse. Well, hypotenuse is across a 90 degree, degree angle. That's my side T. So for of A, A, this is the best angle. And we use those lowercase letters of the angles. 
Okay, let's also talk about B here. B here. So a different color, just color, just so we look at that angle as well. Angle, angle. Again, I need the opposite side. Well, again, A and T not, T not that angle. The opposite side is the one that doesn't form the angle, and angle or across. Well, that's the the lowercase b. So I'm gonna use lowercase, lowercase b divided by the hypotenuse, hypotenuse is still T. The hypotenuse, hypotenuse will change whatever side. News. It's always the always the hypotenuse. This is across from the back. It does not change. That name kind of takes precedent or, or trumps over anything else. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about talk about cosine. Cosine is our next ratio that we're going to talk about. Well, this is going to be very similar, but we use a slightly different side. So this is the, this is the ratio of the what we call it call it side. Side. To to the hypotenuse. If we go this one, this one abbreviation again is the letters, so C O S. Again, we call it, call it cosine. So abbreviate the letters when you write it, write it. And I will need an angle measure in there again, so I'm going to write it as. Uh, as far as our ratio, I can use the adjacent hypotenuse. hypotenuse. Take that all the way out, way out for this one. So, and hypotenuse. I can also abbreviate those as F D J. Or H Y P, or sim or sim A over over H. Okay, if we go ahead and start to look at our picture, then um, again, I'm again about A and B kind of separately here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with angle A. Now we need adjacent. So if we think about the word adjacent, if we're adjacent, adjacent, it means we're next to it. So I want the side that side that's to the angle A. Well, if I look at A here, I actually have two sides that are next to it. I have, I have the and I have T. Have T. But what we have to remember is T already has a name. Because the cross of the 90, it's the hypotenuse. And again, that does not does not. So that only leaves B. B, B is in my adjacent, adjacent. Or it's the side that's next next angle that's not the hypotenuse. Okay, and I'm going to still use T for my hypotenuse. So for cosine of A, A this is going to be B over T. Over T. If I go to my second angle, I'm going to talk about angle A. Angle B here again has two pieces that form it, A and A, but T is the hypotenuse, so I have to use A as my adjacent, and T is still my hypotenuse. Uh, final one here down at the bottom, we need to talk about tangent. So tangent again, again, it's going to be just like the others, it is the ratio of the opposite. Going back to opposite here. Side to the adjacent J side. Okay. So uh, this one's slightly different. We are still talking about opposite and adjacent, so two that we've already talked about. But there is no hypotenuse involved in this one, which sometimes can make it a little bit trickier. So we'll talk through this one as well. Um, abbreviation is going to be tangent, and so T-A-N of theta. Again, we don't say tangent, we call it tangent, tangent. The ratio is just what I said here, opposite to adjacent. So opposite goes on top, divided by adjacent. Or that's O P P divided by A D J, or simply O over A. <coughs> as far as the picture, we can go ahead and start to talk about angle A. So angle A, we've already talked about angle A quite a bit. Quite a bit. Um, the opposite again is all the way across, which is A. And then I need the adjacent. Now adjacent is where it gets tricky because it could be B or T. T is still the hypotenuse. Even though we're not using the hypotenuse anymore, T is still the hypotenuse. So I can't use it, I have to use B. So if I look, this one is going to be A, which is opposite, divided by the adjacent, which is B. And if I go back to what I did up top, these are the same sides I used for opposite and adjacent when I was talking about A. Same things that'll work for B as well. I have to use my opposite, which here's gonna be all the way across to B. I'm going to divide it by my adjacent, which is going to be A, because you can't use T, that's the hypotenuse. So those are your ratios. Okay, let's go ahead and move to the second page here. The second page is going to focus on how do we actually use these, um, and how do we actually remember them. So at the very top, you have this phrase called Sokotoa. 
Okay, SOHCAHTOA is a way to just kind of remember these ratios um, and make sure we know what sides are associated with each one. So the spelling of SOHCAHTOA is really important. It's S-O-H-C-A-H and T-O-A. Um, but each one of those sets you can see is kind of separated. It's talking about one of our ratios. So the S-O-H is talking about sine. So it's saying that sine of an angle is going to be O and H. Well, O and H stand for opposite and hypotenuse, so I'm gonna abbreviate those a little bit there, um, opposite and hypotenuse. Okay, I can do the same thing for C or C, which is gonna be cosine of our angle is going to be the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And finally, T is gonna be tangent of an angle is going to be our opposite divided by our adjacent. Okay, so you can start to see that those letters of SOHCAHTOA mean something, and they tell us in order what it's gonna be. So it tells us the ratio, the number on top, or the piece that goes on top, and the piece that goes on bottom for each one of these. And so as we start to work through these, we can use that to kind of help us figure out what numbers and letters we're actually using um, in each place so we can work through that. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about number one. So let's actually get to using some of these ratios. So we need to find the value of each trig ratio, and I have sine of A, cosine of A, tangent of A, and then the same things all with B. So I'm gonna focus just on A first. I'm gonna start with sine of A. Well, A is down here in the corner, and what I need to do is, for all of these really, I'm gonna need to know what my opposite adjacent and hypotenuse are. So let's start to figure those out. For A, let's start with hypotenuse. Across the 90 is gonna be the 13. So that's still the hypotenuse. But then I need opposite and adjacent. Well, opposite is across my triangle. So all the way across my triangle gets me to the five. That's gonna be my opposite. And then next to this, or what's forming my angle is the 12. So that is my adjacent. Okay, now based on those, I can go ahead and set up all my ratios. My ratios really just means fractions. So sine of A, if I go up to the top here, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, opposite is five, hypotenuse is 13. So my ratio is five divided by 13. And that is simply my answer. I can do the same thing with cosine of A. Okay, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So my adjacent is the 12. My hypotenuse is 13. So this is 12 over 13. Same thing with tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite is 5. Adjacent is the 12. So this is going to be 5 divided by 12. Then I can go ahead and move on to B. Now if I move to B, a couple things are going to change here. I need to kind of rename all of my sides now based on using this new angle up here at B. So my hypotenuse is still the 13, because again, that does not change. But now if I go across my triangle, I'm at the 12. So 12 is now going to be my opposite, and my adjacent, sorry, going across is my 12. My adjacent, or my side next to it here, is going to be the five. So that five and 12 have kind of switched places, going from adjacent um, to the opposite there. So let's go ahead and see how that affects our sine, cosine, and tangent. Well, sine is still opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite now for my angle B in blue here is the 12. My hypotenuse is 13. So this is going to be 12 divided by 13. Then I can go to cosine, which is going to be adjacent in hypotenuse, which is 5 and 13. So 5 over 13. And finally, tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent, 12, 5. So 12 over 5. Okay, now one quick note here just to kind of notice, now that we found all six of these, these are really the six ratios we can find for a triangle, we wouldn't ever do our angles based on C because I don't have the opposite and adjacent kind of like we have with the others. So um, dealing with these six, you can start to see some patterns here. For example, sine of A and cosine of B are the exact same thing. Same thing with cosine of A and sine of B. Okay, those two kind of just switched there, that the sine became the cosine and the cosine became the sine. Well, if we think about what that is, that's really, I'm still using the hypotenuse on the bottom of both of them, okay? But the opposite and the adjacent are switching. That's what we're seeing here by switching from angle A to angle B is that the opposite and adjacent are switching. And so I see that switch show up in my fractions as well. 
I also technically see that in tangent as well. The opposite and adjacent are switching, and so that fraction actually flips, um, which is why I'm seeing the 5 over 12 become 12 over 5. So that switching of what we're calling opposite and adjacent really is why all of these are different. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get into finding some missing sides. So for example number two, we need to find the missing side x, and I'm given an angle measure here of 38. So I'm going to be using this angle as kind of my reference angle. Um, that's the angle I'm going to be working from, um, and I also have the 10. Uh, let's actually start with the 10 here. That side is across from my 90 degrees, so I know its name already. This is going to be my hypotenuse. Okay. I also need to figure out what other side I'm working with. Now, I don't actually know the side, but the other side I'm going to be working with is X because I don't know anything about this other side on the bottom. I'm going to be trying to be trying to find that's the side I want to use. Well, according to this angle, X is across my triangle, so this is going to be opposite or O. So I'm using O and H. And I need to figure out what trig uh, function that actually is. So if I go back up to the top here, SOHCAHTOA, O and H is going to be S. So S is sine. I'm going to be using my sine function. So we go back to number two here. I need to do sine. And we say it's sine of theta. But remember, theta is the angle. So now that I know the 38, that's going to go here next to the sine. And that's going to equal my opposite, which is X, divided by 10. So I've just set up my trig ratio there, including my angle. From there, I'm going to actually start to solve this. Well, I need to solve for x. So to get x by itself, currently x is being divided by 10. I need to not divide by 10. I need to get rid of that. And so to get rid of it, I'm going to multiply this right-hand side by 10, which cancels out. But if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. So I need to multiply the other side by 10 as well. What that does is it now gives me that x is going to equal 10 times the sine of 38. So 10 times the sine of 38 is my answer. But to get that on my calculator, I'm going to simply type in 10. And then your sine, cosine, and tangent are right kind of in the middle here. Okay, At least on my calculator and your calculator, might have to look for them a little bit. Um, but we have sine, cosine, and tangent. I'm going to use sine of 38. Close your parentheses, hit enter and I get 6.1566. I'm gonna go one decimal place, so I'm gonna call this 6.2 with the rounding there. Okay, now real quick before we go on, some of you might be having a little freak out right now because you did everything I just did, but you have a different answer. Um, that actually is completely possible. There are two modes in your calculator, one that's called degrees and one that's called radians. We're using degree measures here for our angles, so we need your calculator to be in degree mode. So if I go up to the top here, right next to the second key, the blue key, um, is a button that says mode. If I click that, the third one down, you'll see you have radian and degree. I need it to be on degree. So if it is not highlighted, go over it and hit enter and highlight that. Once you're done, you can hit second quit and get back to your screen. Okay, there is a quick test that you can do to see if your calculator is in the right mode. If you just quick do sine of 90, that should always equal 1. If it doesn't equal 1, then your calculator is not in the correct mode. So I'm going to put that just at the top here. Um, this is just a quick calc test to make sure it's in the right mode. You want to type in sine of 90 and make sure that it gets 1. If sine of 90 does not equal 1, then you're not in the right mode and you need to switch it. Okay, that's important because as you get to some different calculators, it's in some different places. If you need help with that, reach out to me and I can help you with that. Let's talk about number three, though. Number three, we have another missing side, but it's in this triangle's kind of spun around a little bit. I still have an angle measure. That's my 62. If I look, I have a hypotenuse still. I still have a cross from the 90 is my 16, so that's my hypotenuse. But I need to figure out what side this x is. Well, it's next to my 62, so that means it's an adjacent. So now I'm using A and H, which if I go back to SOHCAHTOA, um, I'm using cosine. So cosine is going to be the value that I use here. So this is going to be cosine of my angle, which is 62 degrees. Uh, I'm going to set that equal to my fraction, which is going to be my adjacent over my hypotenuse, or x over 16. Okay, and the way I'm going to solve this is the exact same way I solved the last one. I need to get x by itself, so I need to get rid of 16. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 16, which leaves me with x is equal to 16 times the cosine of 62. And I can go ahead and jump to my calculator here um, and type that in. So I'm just going to simply type in uh, sorry, 16 times the cosine of 62. 
hit enter and I get 7.51 or I'm just going to stick with 7.5 on the bottom here number four now this one's gonna be a little bit trickier um, it looks kind of similar to two and three um, but as we start to go here you're gonna see that there's a little difference in where that missing side ends up which is gonna cause a little bit of issue Okay, but let's go ahead and start to work through it. If I start to identify my sides, I'm starting with my angle here at 57. Uh, I have a side across from my 90 degrees, it's X, but that's still gonna be my hypotenuse. Um, and then I have a side next to my angle, so that's my adjacent. So again, I'm using A and H, same we just use in here in number three. So I'm gonna use cosine. So this is gonna be cosine of my angle, 57 is equal to the adjacent, which is now the four, divided by the hypotenuse, which is X. So if I look at what I have here, I now have four over X, which means that X is now in the bottom. Now, I still need to get X by itself, but the way to do that is actually a little bit different than what we did in two and three. In two and three, I multiplied by the number in the bottom. To do that, what we're really doing is getting rid of the fraction. I need to do the same thing here. The problem is I don't have a number in the bottom, I have an X. And so I have to multiply by whatever is in the bottom. I have to multiply by X which seems a little counterintuitive because I'm trying to get X by itself, but now I just moved it to the other side, okay? But the nice thing is that these X's now cancel on the right-hand side, and I now have X times the cosine of 57, sorry here, 57, is equal to four. But what I've done is I've gotten rid of the fraction, and X is now just multiplied by the cosine of 57. Now, cosine of 57 is just a number, so I need to get rid of that number. It's being multiplied, so to do that, I get rid of it by division. So I'm going to simply divide by the cosine of 57. If I do that on both sides, I end up getting X by itself. So I had to move X in order to get X by itself. Okay, now in my calculator, I'm going to quickly type in 4 times the cosine of 57, um, or divided by the cosine of 57, because that's going to give me my answer. So divide by the 50, 57, um, with your cosine there, hit enter, I get 7.34, um, or I'm just going to simply call this 7.3. Okay, so that one's a little bit trickier, and it really just depends on where that missing side is, what ends up happening. Um, but these are really the two types of ways you should be solving these. Either multiply by a number on both sides, which gets x alone, or multiply by the x and then divide to get x alone. Okay, those are really the only two things that should happen, and it just depends on it, whether the x is in top or bottom. So refer back to these as you need to. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, taking a look at number five here, I need to find the value of each of these. So I need to find the value of tangent of 26. Well, tangent 26, I can actually type that into my calculator. So I'm just going to grab my calculator here quick. I can simply type in tangent 26, hit enter, and I get the value. Okay, now I'm going to go a few decimal places on this one. I'm going to go four decimal places um, because more than likely this is probably not the only thing I'm going to do. Um, I've probably got other stuff I'm going to do after this, and I want to keep enough of that value to get a good answer. Okay, I'll do the same thing with the next one. Sine of 49 is going to be 0.7547, okay, and I'm really looking at that fifth decimal place to decide if I keep it the same or I round. These two both stay the same. Okay, I'll do the same thing with the next one, cosine of 100. Type it in. Uh, I get a negative number, which is fine, negative 0.1736. And again, that one stays as well. So these ones all stayed the same, but you're really looking for that next decimal place to see if it needs to round up. Okay, so that is really it for notes today. The last thing I want to talk about, though, is just rounding. Um, for these ones, if you are finding a missing side length, I want you to round missing sides to the nearest tenth, so just one decimal place. If you are finding just the value, so what we did here in number five, I want you to round those trig values to four places. Okay, and again, that's just to give us enough accuracy to get good answers without rounding too much. So that is your introduction to trigonometry.